So as a criminal lawyer, one of the concepts that I see a lot of people get confused about is the difference between a bench warrant and an arrest warrant. So what I'm going to do is explain the difference between the two and then also let you know what you need to do in the event that you have an outstanding warrant. So. I am criminal defense attorney Hannah Akintoye, and if you have a warrant, do not panic. These are things that happen quite often, and they can easily be cleared up as long as you go through the appropriate channels. So uh, if you have a criminal case or you know somebody who does, whether or not you have a bench warrant right now, this is also important information that you are going to need to know. Because oftentimes when I have been practicing, I have seen bench warrants issued in situations where there were just minor miscommunications and now you missed a court date or now something occurs and there's a warrant out for your arrest. So let's start with arrest warrants. Let's say you are in a situation where you go out and you're at a bar and you end up getting into a bar fight and during the course of that fight you so happen to be the aggressor and you also so happen to be the individual who wins in the fight. So you beat the other person up essentially and now somebody calls 911 and the police are on their way. So what do you do? You run because you do not want to be there when the police arrive. So now the police arrive, they take statements from everybody who was present and everybody says the same thing, that you were the aggressor and that you beat this person up. So what do the police do? They now issue an arrest warrant for your arrest. And the way that an arrest warrant is issued is they go to a judge and they outline the probable cause, right? The reasons for why a crime has been committed and why you are believed to have committed that crime. And they tell the judge to sign off on this affidavit that they prepare so that they can arrest you if you are found or if you're located um, within that jurisdiction. Now, arrest warrants can be extraditable or non-extraditable. What does that mean? An extraditable warrant is a warrant where if you are found in another state or another jurisdiction from where the original event occurred, the police in that particular state can arrest you and bring you into the state in which you are actually being charged. Now, a non-extraditable warrant is a warrant that is only really effective or valid in the state in which the uh, incident happened and the state where the warrant is actually issued. So those are arrest warrants. Now, if you have an outstanding arrest warrant, and I've said this before in a previous video of mine, you want to make sure that you connect with an attorney so that you can eventually turn yourself in. Now, the bad news about having an arrest warrant is that, of course, you have a warrant. Uh, somebody can arrest you at any point in time. But the good news is that you were not arrested on the scene or you were not arrested immediately and therefore you have time to prepare. And honestly, you have no excuse. You should be prepared. And so what that means is that if you need to uh, figure out childcare or if you have other circumstances or if you need to take off of work, you can do that without anybody knowing that um, you had an outstanding warrant and you eventually turned yourself in. Because what happens in, in most situations is, let's say the fight happened on a Wednesday night. If you get arrested that night, you are likely going to miss work the next day. If you have children, I don't know where your children are going to go or how your children are going to get to school or to daycare. If you have other obligations that you usually have to fulfill during a regular workday, you're going to miss all of that. And you're not going to be able to make very many phone calls to make alternative arrangements for your obligations. So having an arrest warrant is kind of um, a blessing in disguise, if you will, <laughs> because at least you can prepare for what you know is yet to come. So uh, with respect to arrest warrants, you want to make sure that you connect with either an attorney or somebody that can advocate on your behalf to arrange for you to turn yourself in. That way, you know exactly uh, where to go, what's gonna happen, and the hope and the goal is to get in and out in one day so that you do not have to stay in jail overnight. So those are arrest warrants. A bench warrant is a little bit different, and the term comes from a judge issuing a warrant while the judge 
is sitting on the bench. So that usually means that you have a pending case of some kind. So let's say in this same scenario with the bar fight, you end up getting charged with simple assault and you are given a court date to show up in court and you miss that court date. Now, what ends up happening is as long as you have been provided with adequate notice of that court date, the judge can then go ahead and issue a warrant for your arrest. And those are called bench warrants. Now, the difference between an arrest warrant and a bench warrant is twofold. Uh, one, arrest warrants are usually initiated by police officers. Bench warrants are usually initiated by judges. Uh, secondly, where you turn yourself in could also be different depending on what state or jurisdiction that you are in. With arrest warrants, uh, you haven't even reached the level where you have a pending case yet. And so in that particular situation, you are going to want to turn yourself in to the police so that you can get processed and booked and then so that the, uh, the court proceedings can then happen after that. Now, with a bench warrant, you have likely already been processed and booked, meaning that you have had your fingerprint and your mugshot done. And so what you want to do in a bench warrant situation, and again, this depends on what state and jurisdiction that you're in, but what you want to do in bench warrant situations is turn yourself into the court or specifically to the courtroom where the judge issued the bench warrant. Uh, now, this also depends on how much time has elapsed since the judge issued the bench warrant and when you actually turn yourself in. If years have passed, it is very possible that that judge is no longer sitting on the bench. Uh, but if it, this is just something that happened a couple days ago or a couple weeks ago, it is likely that um, the same uh, courtroom or the same uh, judge will um, be presiding over your case. This varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, but if you turn yourself in on a bench warrant directly to the courthouse or to the courts, it's easy for them to uh, pull up your case and then clear your bench warrant or figure out what they are going to do with your case. However, if you have a bench warrant and you turn yourself into the police, then what will happen is that you may prolong the uh, situation because the police will have to take you into custody immediately and then they will also have to transport you to the court to answer to that bench warrant. Alternatively, I have had clients uh, get bench warrants and they never see handcuffs in that particular day, meaning that you know we walk in or they walk in and they follow my instructions and they turn themselves in exactly where I tell them to go. And then the judge essentially just sets a new court date so that we can continue forward with the proceedings. So oftentimes, if you have a bench warrant, you just want to make sure that to follow the protocol in the particular state or jurisdiction that you are located in so that you do not prolong uh, the time that uh, you may potentially be in custody. So those are the major differences between an arrest warrant and a bench warrant. I hope that information is helpful to you. If you have any questions, always feel free to reach me here or on my website, mydclaw.com, and I'm happy to answer your questions further. I hope you all stay safe and take care.